Holista Plan presents Tax Time with Jeff Levine. Let's talk taxes. Hi, I'm Roger Pine from Holista Plan, and I'm here with Jeff Levine. He is the Chief Planning Officer at Buckingham Strategic Wealth. He's also a member of our team here as a tax planning strategist. Jeff, it's great to see you. How's it going? Good, man. Good to be back with you. I, I'm, I'm digging the haircut, you know, just, just a little shorter and we'll start to, the people won't be able to tell us apart. Yeah, I, I'm definitely trending in your direction, it would appear. Uh, so our last time we did a, a, one of these calls, it was 30 minutes because we were going through end of year planning strategies with respect to the new proposed tax law, tax yep. uh, law changes. And we do have a part two on that we're going to do, I think, in the next few weeks about just other end of year planning things that have to happen by December 31. But we're going to try to get in there with a, with a shorter one, despite this long preamble, um, where we're going to talk about a very specific thing that came up uh, in the last week that kind of blew my mind. I had never heard of this before, but I think it could potentially impact like millions of people across the country. So I wanted to raise it with you. Let's talk about the mechanics of it and then what people might need to do as far as on their, what advisors need to do with their clients on the tax returns. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I got yeah, it. I think so. I mean, I, I was pretty blown away that this ha- only came up. This actually came from one of our members, one of our subscribers. And what they pointed out was the IRS has announced i don't know i know is it called a ruling or what is it called when like the irs types up an article giving clarity about how to it, treat a thing it, it what is can that? be on any number of forms we've got rulings notices uh okay. procedures you know any and you know any of the above all with different varying levels of authority right like okay you start with the code then the code right below the code is regulations regulations effectively like are in effect law they have the same treatment as law but they're not so if you took the IRS to court, let's say, over the regulations and say it's the exact opposite of what the code is, mm. the tax court might say, well, the code is more authoritative and yes, you're right. But then below regulations, then you've got things like revenue rulings and IRS notices and IRS revenue procedures. And kind of as you go down this list, it becomes less and less authoritative to the point where, you know, you get to things like IRS publications, which you know, Roger, I know you live and breathe in, right? Because yeah. from a forms perspective and all that sort of stuff, and what are these uh, worksheets, et cetera, and how do you calculate this? There's actually a great quote from a court case that maybe about a decade ago. Oh, no, it was uh, the Bob Rao case, actually, uh, from the case that decided the once per year rollover rule wasn't actually a uh, an per account rule, that it was actually an aggregate to everything. This great quote from that court case said that, you know, taxpayers rely on guidance from the IRS at their own peril, Oh my! <laughs> which, uh, which I always love to point out because it's like, wait a second, the, 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 the organization, the agency that is responsible for tax policy, like, or implementing tax policy and giving us all these, you know, informative uh, publications, et cetera, we rely on them at our own peril. That's kind of, yeah. Yeah. Wow. But yeah. So, so yeah, so we, we get all sorts of guidance from the IRS. Every, again, everything kind of at different levels of authority. If you walked into a court and said, but IRS publication, you know, two says this, the court's going to say, that's great, but it doesn't really matter. Too bad. Right? Yeah. And there are mistakes in those, which we have, we've found. Um, yeah. But okay. Well, this hope we're hoping this is not a mistake. Um, we have at least some uh, word from the IRS that they agree with this interpretation. And, and this, this pertains specifically to the unemployment compensation exclusion, which was introduced in March of 2020 as far as as part of the AARPA um, law. I believe that's when it happened. Yes, it did, because it was halfway through the year, which was a nightmare. But here's the here's the big news that, that hit us, which is if you are in a community property state, and we'll name those in a second, but if you're in a community property state, recall that the rule is what's mine is yours, what yours is mine. So that's assets, but also income. Mm-hmm. And so the interpretation here is that, Jeff, we're married and I collect unemployment. My Half of my un- unemployment in a community property state is considered to be yours. And so as a result of that, the $10,200 cap per person on the unemployment compensation exclusion, that can be applied to both spouses because in essence, let's say that I made $20,000 in unemployment income. Normally in a non-community property state, I would be limited to $10,200 of exclusion. But 
because we're sharing it and Jeff's got 10,000 and I've got 10,000 because we're married, then we can each take up to 10,200, in this case, 10,000 of exclusion on that. So in effect, it allows some married couples to double the exclusion they're able to take. They were previously able, able to take an unemployment compensation exclusion, which it's to pretty, me is pretty, pretty huge. Neat. Like and from, a, from a perspective of you know, how things are reported on a tax return, you might say, well, if you're joint filers at the end of the day, who really cares? And, and the key difference, and, and Roger, you alluded to this, but in a separate property state, like where I am in New York, right? Well, I keep saying I'm in New York. I'm not in New York anymore. I'm in you Missouri. did move states. I did. I did move. I, in a I busy couple months. That. Yes. Uh, to <laughs> all my newfound friends in Missouri, I am so sorry. I, I really do love you here. I just, I'm still in, you know, uh, it's the vest. I see myself in the Zoom mirror and I'm like, I got to be from New York, right? No one, no one here wears this vest. So the, um, uh, you know, New York, Missouri, most of the states, actually, about 80% of the states, not quite 80% of the population, because some of the more populous states use community property, but about 80% of the states use separate property. And when you file a joint tax return, it's your stuff plus someone else's stuff reported on one return. But it's not like well, everything is ours. It's just reported in aggregate, if you will. Whereas in community property states, again, you alluded to this, it's everything that we earn is as if you earned 50% of it and I earned 50% of it. So whereas one spouse may have actually worked the whole year and had you know, full employment, half of their earnings belong to the unemployed spouse. And to the reverse of that, if one spouse was receiving unemployment, half of their unemployment is actually belongs to the other individual. There's weird nuances of how community property and uh, just community property and IRS rules work in, in tandem. I, I, I talk a lot of times about the step up and basis rules and how they apply Big here. One. Community property states actually tend to get an advantage over that for couples, almost like a free double step up and basis, whereas in separate property states, you have to do more planning for that. And those, you know, for those who are now, uh, you know, interested in knowing, as a reminder, we're talking about uh, Arizona, California, Idaho, uh, Louisiana, Nevada, New Mexico, Texas, I'll look at my list here, Two Washington, more. Wisconsin, and, uh, and Alaska is also a, an opt-in state, so uh, you know, for whoever really wants to opt in to get, I mean, if you're in a separate property state, you're always like, what is that weird stuff over there in, in those community property states? But if you want to, uh, you know, Alaska's uh, allowed an opt in for, for some time. So uh, some neat stuff there. But yeah, I, I think this is pretty cool. And so Roger, what, what interests me most about this is not just the cool, hey, we found something neat about this, but the ability to actually impact lives, right? And say, Hey, we, we've, we've got an ability to, to let you know about something. As we record this year, we're coming up on the end of the, you know, the 2020 filing season. And just as a framework, I know everything is, is switched in. You mentioned ARPA earlier. That was earlier this year. for 2000, I think you meant for 2020's tax year, which you, know, you become a CPA. You don't, you don't think it's 2021 until the 2020 tax year is over. Uh, that was early in 2021, but it impacted the 2020 tax filing year, right? And, and so from that perspective, uh, as we look at this, we're coming to the end of that time. We've got about a week or so left here in filing, but those who have already filed still have three years to file an amended tax return. And look, if you can remove $10,000 of income from your tax return, if you are in a 12% bracket, that's $1,200. That's, you know, that's meaningful dollars, even after maybe you've paid a CPA to, to help do that. So, you know, my question, Roger, was like, okay, so what do we do with this? And the really cool thing about, you know, the way you guys have built the software is you can, you can kind of tell people, hey, you've got this. And so why don't, why don't you share a little bit about that? Because I think that is the really interesting thing here for the practicality of, of this software and what it can do. And then also, you know, we, this is just one example, right? Like these types of things come up from time to time. I know we've, we've, you've seen this uh, earlier this year when things change or different interpretations or, hey, we found this, we were able to go back to advisors also. But, you know, can you, can you share with us a little bit more about what, you, what, what the plan is now, now that we've you know, effectively uncovered this thanks to this uh, eagle-eyed advisor who brought yeah. to our attention? Well, I mean, I, I first want to highlight that. I mean, like one of the things that's been really 
fun about building our company is that so many good ideas are coming from the member advisors who are using the product. And so this came from a member advisor. And so, uh, you know, that, that's fantastic. And so now we're able to blast that out to thousands of other advisors across the country. And I would hope that those advisors who are in some of these community property states, you know, even if your clients, you know, maybe you're working with ultra high net worth people and your clients may not be impacted by this particular rule, there are people in your geography who would benefit from this. So maybe write that article or send that tip into the local paper. Like we together as a profession can get this information way out because honestly, this started with some random IRS webpage that one guy found and then brought it to us and we're giving it to you. And can we get this out to as many people as possible? And yes, like the multiplier effect of changing lives. Hey, I'm going to put you on the spot, Roger. Can we, can we link to that IRS webpage yes. here? Oh, there you go. Link, link to it in the, yes, we'll put it in the, in the bottom. Uh, yeah. In the bottom of this little Somewhere video. Somewhere here, we'll there'll be a link. Yes. That you can... And we'll, and we'll tweet this out so people can get it in there. I, I yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, so that's one. And then, you know, so, so two is what's great about having a database of returns is I was able to run a script the other night to just pull, this is a big if then statement, right? If you're in one of those states that Jeff mentioned, which by the way, a good rule of thumb for kind of remembering what community property states are, this is not fully 100%. But if you look at the states that were formerly Spanish colonies, Texas going up to California, a lot of them are community property. And I think that's just a holdover from that particular law, that culture and that, that history of law. Um, so that's a good way to remember it. But so it's an if statement, right? If it's a 2020 return and there is unemployment compensation and it's a married filing jointly and it's in these states and, it, and if it looks like the total um, unemployment compensation is higher than 10,200, but the taxpayer only took 10,200 of UCE, and you add all those up, that's hard for advisors to flip through all their returns for, but our computer can do that in no time flat. And so we've actually highlighted, um, it was over 80 when I ran it the other night. I need to kind of tailor it a little bit. But what I'm going to do is this week, we'll send an email out to all the advisors with a link to that return that they uploaded. It says, hey, you may want to talk to your client about XYZ. And so they're able to go back to the advisor we were able to proactively give them something to talk with the, to go back to their client, talk with their client about it proactively, which I just, it, that to me is like the gold of, yes. of what we do. I mean, like, I don't know, Jeff and I get excited about this stuff because that is, that is tax planning at a whole other level that it's not just reactive, but it's proactive. It's not just you give me a document and I give you some stuff. It's, Hey, remember that document you gave me nine months ago? Here's the thing we found now due to this new IRS interpretation. That is so huge. And only a computer can do that. Like no human is going to go through every single one of their clients' returns hand by, you know, by hand to find that stuff. So I, I don't know. I'm really pumped about this. And I, I'm just thrilled when we find new things like this that really put a human and a computer together to produce a better outcome for clients. Totally. Could... Could not have said it. I, I have nothing else to add. I mean, that was great. Couldn't have said it better myself. I, it's such a difference. And it makes you wonder why, you know, tax professionals don't have a little bit more of this as well. I mean, I, I get it. You know, a lot of times this guy, you know, you're, you're in the office, you get the returns done and kind of tax season's over. Although if you ask most uh, CPAs right now, this has been the tax season of a thousand days, <laughs> kind of been going nonstop since February of 2020, just because of all the rule changes and pushing back and, and uh, deadlines, et cetera. But I mean, this is, this is real value add stuff. And it, even though it may only be in some cases, a few hundred dollars of tax savings at the end of the day, it's that you know, like, hey, you were looking out for me. No one else is doing this. I might have missed this. And if I might have missed this, what else might I have missed that you actually are going to, to, to find? Whether that's in my taxes, my social security planning, my investments, whatever it is. That's, uh, you know, I've long said, if you want to grab new clients and, and generate new business, you ultimately have to perturb people to the point where they realize something is wrong and they need your help. Right there, and, and not in a fearful way, not in like fear mongering. Like if you don't work with me, you're gonna, you know, your retirement's gonna fail. And but people reach out for help when they like the old. When do people reach out for help? We always would like to say, like in a perfect world, to be before they have a problem. But that's not the way people actually work. 
right? It's when yeah. they realize they have a problem, they reach out for help. So part of your job in terms of raising new, you know, new clients and raising new clients, right? You know, raising new business or, or generating new clients, bringing on and, and growing your, your, uh, your, your practice and helping more families save more dollars and reach better financial outcomes is helping them to understand that like, yeah, this is complicated and there are things that come up. And, and this is just one really cool example of that. So yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. It's awesome. Well, good deal. Well, hopefully, you know, hopefully if you're watching this and you're in a community property state or you got that one rando client in a community property state, take a second look or at least tell a friend because I think a lot of money could be saved. I and mean, there's millions and millions of people who live in these states. So let's try to get the word out together. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, sir.